Bali is usually associated with beautiful beaches and a vibrant local culture. But there's a side of life on the island that tourists who flock there never see. People with mental illnesses held for years in chains, cages, and even medieval stocks. The practice is known as pasung, literally stocks, and it's common in Indonesia. People are locked up by their own families, forced to eat, sleep, and defecate in the same spot while their illness goes untreated. When one of Indonesia's leading psychiatrists, Dr. Lu Siriani, discovered hundreds of patients like this, she decided to do something. FSRN's Rebecca Hinchke went with her on one of her rounds in Karangasem in East Bali. In a dark one meter by one meter room, Wawang Wenton's feet are shackled. His legs are locked with a metal hook to a piece of wood, preventing them from moving. The room reeks of urine and feces. He's been sitting like this in a room opposite his wife's house for nine years. Wenton's sightless eyes fill with tears when I shake his hand. My wife gives me food here twice a day, four in the morning and five in the afternoon, he says. I'm not allowed to be freed. My family would not let me. I can't have a proper wash for the mattress will get wet. I don't want that. There's no one around except a farm worker who runs off to get someone. The high priest of this village arrives. He's dressed in a bright yellow sarong and crisp white shirt. Three grains of rice have been placed on his forehead, a traditional Hindu blessing. Wenton's wife works at the high priest's house and tells Dr. Suryani that she is worried for her safety if her husband is freed. When he was free, he would get very angry and violent, very violent towards his wife. When other people came here, he was normal with me. Also, he was totally fine, but he hit his wife often, would pull her hair and put a knife to her throat. If he was stressed, he went crazy like that at her. I have often suggested to his wife that she should let him go now, but she says she is frightened that she will be attacked again. Where is his wife now, I ask? At a relative's wedding, he says. She's busy. Dr. Suryani's son, Yayang, is on the phone to Wenton's son, patiently trying to convince him to release his father and take him to the island's only mental hospital. Bali's governor has just launched a major public health initiative offering free health care for all Balinese. And Dr. Suryani's team will cover any additional costs for Wenton's treatment. And I said to him, we give treatment for him since 2008. Have ever we asked any money from your family? And I said, we never ask any money, so you need to understand that money is no problem for your uh, father, actually, but your willingness to cooperate with us giving uh, treatment for your father so he can be better and normal again. Mm-hmm. That's the most important. According to the Indonesian Ministry of Health, there are thought to be about 20,000 cases of shackling in the country. The government has vowed to stop the practice in the next three years, but it's a target that even the ministry admits is ambitious. Many in Indonesia, and particularly on the majority Hindu island of Bali, believe the root of mental illness lies in the supernatural, which Western medicine is unable to treat. A 2006 study found almost all patients eventually seeking treatment at Bali's only mental hospital had visited a spiritual healer first. Dr. Suryani has a unique approach to psychiatry that includes meditation, Hindu spiritualism, and preventative health programs, as well as the use of antipsychotic medicines. So Balinese more trust healer than psychiatrists in the past. But after I introduced uh, meditation and relaxation in public, uh, people understand that a psychiatrist also understand about supernatural, but the other way. 
not directly talk about supernatural is mean uh, ancestor or god or uh, goddess and so on now but we try to translate the healer concept to the daily uh, understanding of the people about uh, mental disorder Dr. Suryani is Bali's leading psychiatrist. She's the former professor of psychiatry at the island's top university, Udayana. She can charge up to a thousand US dollars for a consultation, and she uses some of that money, as well as donations from Australia and Germany, to help Bali's mentally ill who are not being treated. Since she started this work five years ago, she's successfully treated and released back into the community forty patients whose families had viewed them as hopeless and locked them up. Two days later, and I've heard that Wenton, the blind man who's been in shackles for nine years, is now at the Bali Mental Hospital. So I'm heading there. He's in the observation room. There's a window and a private toilet. Wenton smiles as I ask him if he remembers me. Things have changed so much since you saw me last. Thank you. My room is clean and the smell is good. My wife and one of my children have come here. I can't walk, have to crawl. Legs are stiff after being stocks for so long. I had to be helped when having a bed. That's why my first bed for years, it felt so good, feel so much fresher. When I get out of here, I want to return of being a farmer. I am feeling so much better since you last saw me. Now I have hope. Rebecca Henschke, Free Speech Radio News, Bali.